Hello, Internet. Hello, Woad of Community. I am Jackie Fox, and today I'm doing something a little bit more for the new players out there, or I guess the more casual, not new players. Um, so what we're going to be talking about today is everything that you need to do to get your unit into tip-top shape from start to finish, missing nothing. Forty, we're only able to get to level one twenty, but let's start a video recording to go along with this. So let's talk units. Let's say you've just recently pulled a unit, and you want to know what to do to make it the best it can be. Now the first and biggest thing that you're going to run into, the, f the, the thing you're going to hear the most about, the thing that you're going to struggle the most with, the thing that's going to bottleneck you the fastest and soonest, is that character's shards. You need a lot of these. You only get about 25 per extra pull. You don't get any on the first pull of a character. You get 25 on each additional pull, which is something that makes uh, higher cost, like 100 cost characters, even harder to max out because it's so much harder to get their shards because even though you've pulled that first one, you may not pull your second one for another couple months. Whereas 90 cost, 80 cost, and especially 70 cost, um, Actually, somebody told me the drop rates are the same for 70 and 80, and I kind of believe it. I think I checked that out. Anyways, for those, it's going to be a lot easier to pull multiple copies of them. So you're going to need that. You're also going to need Rainbow Vision Spears for this part of the process as well. Let me find... Oh, yep, you. Uh, for the So that is going to be initially for your limit break gauge. <clears throat> And that has several levels to get you up to, well, not level 99, but to get to level 99, you're, ne you're going to need 600 shards through this system. Here. <laughs> so far. And then you're also going to have to go through uh, five levels of this with increasing uh, need for all of the resources that you see on screen. Elements change by element. And once you've done all of that, um, you can then level up your character to level 99. You should have, at this point... Uh, too compulsive by actually doing this. Oh, I found one. Um, there's also... Each character is going to have a main job and two sub-jobs. Leveling these up is going to... First of all, just, just raising the level at all of these is going to give them bonus stats kind of like leveling them up themselves the bonus stats are a little bit more locked to the sub job itself i think let's see yeah see it just increased increased my stats but mainly what this stuff is going to do um other than being another way to kind of stop you from moving forward and passing the 99 cap is it's going to unlock stuff on your board so this is a whole nother thing this is where you get all of your abilities all of your reactions a lot of stats too so as you can see old velric here who probably won't be good for a while um i have literally zero jp for so i can't buy anything he's probably a bad example because of that but never fear Yes. Let's just give my dude like 25k. Alright, so back to the Velric example. As you can see, you get a lot of things off of this. You're going to want to... Usually, I try to make a beeline for the counter that I want the most. I'm not entirely sure what it is on this, because they're all, like, physical attack counters, which aren't amazing. These two are probably about the same. They're both slash damage. This is multi-hit, though, so I'm going to go for this one first, get it set as my reaction ability. 
And now I have a reaction ability. I'm gonna wanna level that up, but... Oh no. <laughs> Where do I put you? Um... Oh, that's gonna be a problem. Uh, okay, so... Next thing you wanna do. And I'm not saying that these are the best. They are pretty close by though, so that's gonna save me some of this JP. Maybe I can put it down here. Yes! Okay, okay, I got my recording issue dealt with. Oh, so soft sacrifice. Let's go with that too. Okay, so as you're getting started, that's probably the first thing you want to do. You want to find two good support skills, a reaction that you actually want. Get them set. Once you're at this point, you probably want to build those up. I'm going to... No, I'm just going to go for it. I've got enough. Um, you also definitely want to build up their other abilities, their buffs, what you want them to use. Think about the sub-jobs that you're actually going to use with them. If you don't want to use one of their sub-jobs with them, like nobody ever uses, say, Viking with uh, Lightning. So you can just ignore everything with that sub-job. And there'll be, you'll see that little icon. I'll tell you which sub-job. Um, there's also Limit Breaks. These have their own separate currency. I usually get all of mine up to... Level 10 at a minimum, but I don't really see me using this guy much, and he's still pretty low level, so it's not like I'm going to use him anytime soon, even if I wanted to, so let's just go to 10 for now. So one way of maxing them out is to get all of these maxed out. Now you can skip around, skip and choose, and you also don't have to get everything on the board. I would definitely say get all the stats but there's some so let's say we well, he's not a very good example of this honestly <laughs> okay but let's say that we we did not want spirit breaker at all we never wanted to use pugilist sub job with this guy we only wanted spinning splat spinning slash so we would hit spinning slash here unlock the things up to it and that's a that's kind of an in space it doesn't there's nothing else to unlock past it so it's safe to skip that if it were something like let's say you really didn't want him to have breathing technique for for whatever reason well there's a lot of stats hiding behind breathing technique either way you want to go so what you can do there let's see breathing technique is pugilist What you can do there is actually, and I like to do this in advanced settings, but you can turn it off based on when you want them to actually use it. So that's how you adjust their AI, and there's a lot of other things that you can turn on and off, such as their counter. I'm, I'm sorry, not their counter, but their LB, that kind of stuff. You can change sub jobs here, change your support skills, etc. Okay, so you're going to want to unlock all of these, basically. Drain Rush is like his best move by far no thanks flurry enhancement even though I'll probably use the counter don't waste your time trying to level things up here because it happens like one at a time at slow as Christmas I wish they implemented more sliders because up here can be like that too These are my start characters, goddammit. Okay. Oberon. We'll talk about you, Oberon. Okay, so getting them into... Well, actually... Get out of this. Find a 99. Okay, so once you... Ooh. 
Probably not even this 99, but whatever, we'll do it. So once you get them all the way up to level 99, and you can see the EX job unlock conditions here. Okay, so from that, we just need to level these sub jobs since he's already 99. Boom. Okay, now if we return to that main tab, we get the option to EX him. And then I'm not going to because I'm not the biggest fan of Shoot Zelt, even though he is basically Cloud 0.1. <laughs> cloud is Cloud 1.0, obviously. This guy is not quite as good. <laughs> but um, should we unlock that, we get access to these three and these three. Just this whole bottom row between where I'm tapping. And that's going to bring his level up what is it? to 102 potentially and give him some extra stats so after that the next thing you unlock is the next row that's going to enhance one of their skills and also has a levelable slot so part of getting them all the way is is hitting this 20 times because there's not a slider for it uh the next level up is going to get you to these two places. You won't have the four in the diamond at the top, but you will be able to get your second uh, ability enhancement. And your level cap at this point is 115. Then, uh, when you go from 115 to 120, you get this levelable. So, this has to be hit 20 times as well. Additional five, some more stat. And then a final move, this final move note is going to cost you a, a blossom. So it is kind of expensive and it also has to be leveled on the board just like this node and just like this node. <clears throat> so let's go back into my favorites to someone who isn't shoot out. So you can kind of see how that works. So stages are going to come in bursts of three. I want to say it's like, and, and we're doing mind spheres. So once you have enough shards to 99 a unit, once you have your first 600 shards, every shard after that is going to generate um, both a rainbow little metal that you can trade in for mind spheres and other stuff, but mainly mind spheres, and a mind sphere for that unit that corresponds to whatever shard you put in. So as you can see, I've got Oberon to 115, and the thing that is stopping him right now from reaching 120 is getting through the final section. It's going to be a 40, a 40, and then a 120. So it costs 200 shards to go from 115 to 120, which actually makes 115 a lot more achievable than it looks, um, especially if you've saved up certain resources. And let's talk about those for just a second before we move on. So, initially, as you're getting characters to 99, you can, for those first 600 shards, use this system, in which everyone has the same cost starting out, but costs will go up as you buy more. I know they're all at different numbers, it's not because certain mutants are better than others, it's just because I wanted Resnick the most out of these. I still want to have a Resnick the most out of these, but as you can see, I can only buy 7 more shards at this point, it's not enough, so why, why bother? Um, the other thing that you're going to have are these metals, and these are going to be what you get when you get a Mind Sphere. You get a Mind Sphere, and, the, and you get one of these. So this is kind of a measure of how many Mind Spheres you have. The costs in this shop are going to start at 5, and you're going to have chunks of 50. So, potentially, because it only takes 200 of these to get from... Uh, from 99 to 115. 400 total to go from 99 to uh, 120. Yeah. And a total of, from level 1 to level 120, 1,000 uh, shards, essentially. So, 
in order to go from, let's say you just hit 99, you didn't have any extra, you don't have any mind spheres, you hit that 600 point exactly, your first uh, 50, you're going to cost 250, and then 300, and then 350, and then 400. And that's going to be a total of, if I just did that math right, 1,300 of these banked that it will take you to just pretty much instantly take a unit from level 99 to level 115. Now, going back to units, one thing that we haven't talked as much about, and Gafgarian would be a terrible example. Let's go to Kadia is all of this stuff and for these materials these can be farmed very easily i usually over farm especially in one element and then if i ever run out i just use equivalent exchange as you can see i have over farmed uh light by quite a deal if i ever have zero of these i've over farmed all of them actually so it's not a problem but um <laughs> if i ever had zero i could trade for light is what i'm saying but you don't I have the feeling this doesn't yeah 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 that's no fun. Two to one trades. Um so for these things, doing the first three uh steps of a unit's nine step will get you a ticket for three hundred of this, three hundred of this, and then you get your free pull. So four four thousand viz and you can get three hundred of each of these in any color you want. Which is good. Um, but there's also a lot of other ways to get them. That is certainly not the only thing. The only way. And at this point in the game, they're not that hard to get. Which is good. Because they are also used to unlock EX nodes on the EX board. What I mean by that is... this and there's also this additional currency which you can get while you're farming for the level six awakening materials those are usually easy like all of this stuff it, it's very simple to farm for it um or it's very simple to get at it if you're playing the game roundabouts you probably have these materials they're not necessarily hard to get um And neither are materials like this. Again, the mine spheres can be a little tough. Um, but as you can see, I probably... And, and not doing anything special. Not even really trying to farm these specifically at all, ever. I still have like 7,000 of each of them. Even for, for sword, which is the most common one to be spent. So that's like an extra flex. Because, you know, there's so many sword-based units in this game that you use these a lot faster than other ones and i'm still absolutely fine um you know this drops in level five and six and uh the red rooms okay just drops in the red rooms anyways it it, it look it most of these things are easy, easy to get uh blossoms are a bit more complicated they will slow you down a little bit but they're offered in a lot of places often a lot of like limited time shops will have one available a lot of event metal shops will have one available and you can usually pick up three or four or five or six or seven a month sometimes even more than that um if you're paying attention to all of those so that's probably the biggest uh real roadblock other than getting enough of a character shards at this point oh, yeah that's irrelevant to look at for an ex unit um, but it is enough of a roadblock that I've said Thancred stays at 115 because I don't want to spend the two and then maybe the additional three to get his 120 ability. I, I just, I just, I just don't. I, this is even a light account. I'm just nah, nah, nah. But there are some things that we haven't talked about yet. Some things that are actually even more fundamental. And one of the easiest ways to talk about those is through the event chambers, because this is where you're going to do a lot of it, the key quests. 
you want to be a real big roller, real high roller, you can use this guy up here. My understanding is it should raise your affinity um, with every other unit on the team to full. With every, well, with the Esper you have equipped for every member of the team. Every member of the team will get full affinity with the Esper it has equipped. And like, a hundred thousand, a lot of JP. That probably depends on Ovalite. Use Ovalite in this room for sure. It is best there, but also definitely in the JP reward room. Just unlock one of those for shits and giggles. Um, so this quest is going to net you, I want to say... Let's say it's like a thousand or two thousand JP. But if you're using Ovalite, that's going to be more like ten... 12 maybe even 14 depending on your equipment um so what i usually do is i have a jp team a team of units that i've run hit a brick wall on jp with see you've also seen i have a lot of pool jp i could use i just don't because jp rooms are easy um affinity and resonance is kind of another matter and there's a couple ways to go about this so you if let's say you get that new kick-ass unit for an element that you play and you're definitely going to use them on elemental team. Well, you want them to have affinity with the other units on that team. And what that is going to do is give them, I think, like agility, luck, and dexterity or something when they're within a unit or two of each other. Which actually should be really helpful because if your units do group up, then they're all giving each other speed boosts as well. So while they're all in the splash zone, they all have the potential to get out of the splash zone a little bit faster too. Um, compared to units that don't have affinity with each other, you could stand right next to each other and not speed up at all. You know, not really care, just kind of, uh, take, having a good time. Doesn't matter. Um, so this will help you with that. Usually you'll probably pick up about a level of affinity every time you do this. You'll pick up a level of resonance and you need to get up to level 10 with each Esper. Um, and I think you might need even an extra run. It might be 11 runs to get them to level 10 sometimes. Because it feels like there's one that's just a little bit more than one can do. Or they get kind of stuck at 9 for a level sometimes. Um, one thing, if you're really low on these keys, just get your units into a good grouping. Uh, use initial placement. Put, your, put the new unit that you're trying to build affinity with everyone else on one of the corners and then have them move to the center to where they're in between three of the other units. The other corner unit is the one they're gonna get the least affinity with since they're not directly adjacent to them. And then have everybody stand there buffing each other and for as long as they have TP, for as long as they can hold out, then beat the units. And you should get up to about level four affinity with everyone on that team. Alternately, there's the auto battler method, and this is one that I've been favoring lately as I've had more affinity tickets. What you do is you get everyone on, or you know, a set of units from that element that you want to build affinity with and your new unit. You equip everyone espers that they just, they're doing bad with. You know, maybe they're only at like resonance five or whatever, and then you run them through the room five times. And then you switch out the ones that have gotten their Esper to level 10 for something else. So you just have a little bit more depth. And you throw them in for another 5. And at that point, now the unit you just pulled has Esper Resonance completely full with its first Esper. But it should also have com it should also have like level 4 or level 5 affinity with the rest of your team. Just because you did this in 10 runs. Again, you gain about 1 per run, although it can take about 10 to get to level 5 because it does get harder as you go up. So if you're looking to quickly get resonance with a specific Esper and a team and you don't mind sparing the 10 tickets, you can do it that way. Um, you're still going to, look, no matter how long you stall in a level, you're only going to get one level of Esper resonance per ticket. So you're going to have to use 10 anyways. And really, that has, that's what makes me uh, favor the latter route. But if you are scarce on resources, building your team affinity can be done in one or two tickets, even though you'll still have to find some other way to work on your Esper. 
Okay, um, so that's talked about Affinity, Resonance, how to get JP. Oh, okay, so there is another thing. I don't think that I can demonstrate it. Exactly. Maybe I can. I still have Chunok on here. Maybe I'll get lucky. Dang, only got to level up again. Now I got to swap out two people. Okay, so obviously one of the ways that you can level characters up is by just spamming skip tickets, especially at story missions. But, honestly, the, uh, the cubes to get you to level 61 are pretty easy. So I never usually grind that. That's why Chunok started. Uh, yeah, that's why uh, Valentine's Ildira. I, I just leveled her up with the cubes. That's why she's at exactly 61. Um, after that, I tend to do stuff like this more often. The slime quest that's happening right now is really amazing. Um, and would probably finish this whole group in one more run. But one of the advantages to doing it this way, which I hope we get to see. Oh no. And this can take a lot of runs, but there we are. Equipment proficiency up. Finally. <laughs> so this is going to be the third thing. And this, basically, it's going to super nerf anything you equip to them until you get their equipment proficiency to A. I think I can actually demonstrate that still with Chunok here. Okay, so Chunak is good with weapons. He has A there. He's gone... Oh, he's gone all the way to a C. He was at E earlier with armor. And let's see what C status with armor is getting him. Wait, those look like the normal stats. Okay, maybe it doesn't tell you how much it brings them down, but as you can see, it's got this down thing. Insufficient equipment proficiency... Which means that he's basically getting nerfed stats off of it. Yeah. Even worse. Well. B. Yeah. So if. if Let's say my accessory was MR level. Because I have B proficiency. I can equip that. I need A for MR. And because his armor is C. And his armor is MR, that means he needs uh, B at least to be able to be proficient with that. So one more proficiency and he'll be good with everything he has on. Um, yeah. Other than that, like getting into agility, uh, getting into like tuning a character's AI, I'm pretty sure that that is actually a fairly comprehensive guide of how to power up every character in the game. 
so far. And one thing I like to do, and as you can see, Chunok is not my guy. Um, I haven't put in much work with him. I, he's gonna be, he's gonna have a lot of potential as an evade unit in the future. Right now he's a little bit more of a damage. Which explains why Chaos Odin I have a little bit more with than regular Odin. But <clears throat> mainly, I haven't really focused on getting this guy affinity with Espers yet. Let's see, have I done a little bit more with... Uh, yeah, I've done a little bit more with Hope, even though I don't think I've ever used him. Uh, let's see, where's Valentine's Aldira? Yep, had just first time on a team. Okay. And I've used him in Select Quest a bit, so that explains why he's like that. This was an accident. There's no reason he should have resonance with that. Sometimes I wish I could undo resonance with certain espers just so they didn't show up on this list, but uh, mistakes were made. It's okay. And then I like to have affinity teams. Oh. Well... She needs to be replaced. This is how I will indicate that to myself moving forward. Because look, she's got six different espers. That's that's overkill. Slimy boy here's got three. I can definitely get him on that one. You're still at seven. Jeez, she's got seven espers. Let me swap her out too. Okay. And then I also have a team for units that need JP. Um, I was leveling up my MRs and recently and noticed that these three all need oh shite. Yeah, that these three all needed to to have a little bit of a come up, and I've been raising their level. But um, they're also. I think I did get you some JP though, didn't I? Didn't I? I didn't. I really didn't. I still can't. Afford. I can afford to give her enough to do it though. Okay, so we're going to do Lilith some justice before I end this video. Uh... Yeah, 10k will be fine. It's more than enough. And as you can see, I wasn't really a fan of her TP break skill. Supercharges one. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't really do anything. Focus is interesting though. I guess maybe I don't really use her as a ranger. I guess especially because I don't use supercharge. She does have barrage. I could see a focus build for her. Let's see if I have. Oh my god, <laughs> she needs AP bad. She's going on the AP team. <laughs> Okay, we'll figure that out later. But... JP and level up team. Mm-hmm, JP already. Pretty sure I just took her off this team, but it's okay.
Okay, so that is everything I can think of about how to power up your unit. Just the unit itself. Obviously, you want to have these things set. You want to have these things unlocked. You want to have all your skills leveled up. <laughs> unlocked as well. And, and if there's something that you think just isn't good, and it's not necessarily this, you know, you can turn it off. Or you can just turn it off. If it's just an absolute garbage waste of their kit skill, you can just turn it off completely. Um, but I do like some attacks in different formats more than others, so I don't often do that myself. But, um, you know, other than the equipment and the espers and how to choose an esper for your unit, how to build that esper for your unit, because m most espers have their own builds as well, um, what vision cards to pick, and I'm not even saying I'm doing the best job here, I, I gave a magic based vision card as their sub just because it has a general uh, elemental attack up, which feels good on a mixed party, but it actually clashes with this one right here, so it's not helpful, although this one's a physical based one. Well, but it still overlaps, so I should just pick a different card. Good old Fenrir. So, that is how you build up a unit from beginning to end. Not getting into any of that other stuff, but, you know, not, not telling you how to pick the uh, Esper for your unit. But if you have followed through this guide, your unit will work as well with its team and with its equipment no matter what you choose to put on it as long as you have gone through these steps so ultimately that was my goal and it's pretty much going to remain the same until reincarnation comes out at which point there's just a couple of additional steps of i think unlocking the reincarnation system going through each level uh, i think you have to unlock your level ups one at a time and this is also incrementally going to build up your, what people are calling an MA3 or Master Ability 3, which are the bonuses you get for, for that Awakening. And I'm not sure how the Awakened skill, maybe you get that right away. I don't know, but you get up to 140 and then you can drop back to 121 again and build back up for extra stats and do that loop for extra stats. But you get most of the benefit out of just that first part. And now, actually, I've future-proofed this video. Um, I may have done it without any screen recording of, of what I'm talking about at all, and it is certainly a more complex system than I'm describing, and there's a ton of resources that I could talk about that are completely new to it, but that's how to build a character in Wotav about as fast as I could go. So, enjoy, and I hope this is pretty future-proof. Editor Jackie here, as a testament to how complex it is to build even a single load of unit without counting all of the things that you can possibly equip to them and how you build those things individually, I actually forgot a pretty fundamental part of the game and also, just like the previous video, I forgot to get my phone out and start recording video for this. So, give me a second. Okay, got the recording running, and now it's time to talk about bravery and faith. So when you get a new unit, it's going to have 50 faith and 50 bravery. Usually, I wouldn't bother... Well, I mean, there's not really good... Are there good ways of removing faith? Not really. Um, unbelievers baubles are a thing as an item, but... Anyways, don't give faith to units that don't need it. Oh, actually, wait. No, never mind. There is actually one pretty effective way to remove faith from a unit, and that is to throw them in the barracks and then set this slider to 30, which is as low as it goes. But um, the reason I started this conversation in the barracks is that the barracks can raise both faith and bravery to 70 from that initial 50. Since you're probably going to be wanting shards for these units anyways, you should put them in the barracks and get shards for them. Um, but also get that initial boost. So once you have, well, okay, uh, faith is complicated. We're going to have to have a separate discussion about faith before we move on. If you are a mage or a healer or being healed or have status effects, 
you want to have more faith generally. Faith will increase your magic damage. It will increase your healing power. It will increase the amount to which you are healed as well, which doubles up if you're healing yourself, as most healing uh, um, enhancements do. Um, but the drawback is... Oh, also it, it means that you're more likely to land status effects on other people. The drawback is that you're basically weak to all of those things too. You're a little bit weaker to magic in the same way. Uh, you take a bit more magic damage, and you are also more likely to have statuses inflicted upon you. By default. I don't think there's a single mage in the game that you necessarily want to run below 97 faith. Just because they do magic damage. Their, their damage is going to be modified by faith. So you want mages to have high faith. Which also inadvertently means that um, magic units or mages tend to be more easy to inflict status upon. Status can be kind of an anti-magic measure in general because of the way that faith works. There are some physical based units that would appreciate having higher faith and those are the units that want to inflict status elements themselves. But usually you wouldn't go to like 97, it would probably be better to go to like 70, or there's a sweet spot for a lot of units in terms of where you want to get their faith to be if they're not a mage. If they are a mage, if they do deal damage in magic and are mitigated by spirit, so when I say a mage, I even mean Elena, even though she's just a mage with swords, um, you know, if they deal magic damage, they need high faith. Otherwise, you probably, I mean... I guess there is an argument for a lot of physical characters to take their uh, faith down to 30. And that is, as I kind of alluded to earlier, kind of difficult without taking up a barrack slot. And you're going to want your barrack slots open for other characters that you want to get shards from. So you don't necessarily want to use them just for modifying faith. But it's really the only reliable way in the game to do it. And I have let my screen time out, but it's still recording, thank goodness. Um, there, wasn't, there wasn't a whole lot to say there. Um, before, or there, there was a whole lot to say there before changing up. But, again, you can usually, for most units, I would just leave it at the default 50. And one of the reasons for that is, like, especially uh, even on a tank... Um, that you might want to do a little bit better against magic damage. If you happen to use a healer with them, they will heal better. And if they have self-healing moves, which some tanks do, they will heal better in that way. Um, and also, they will be more likely to be revived by full life or raise, which can become... For certain teams, that is important to, to remember. Um... That none of these reasons are reasons to bring them above 50, but they are kind of reasons that you might not take them below uh, below 50. And again, as low as you can go is 30. Bravery, on the other hand, I'm not even going to explain what brave. God damn it. Bravery, on the other hand, I'm not even going to explain what bravery does. Because every unit benefits from what it does, and every unit is better for having 97 bravery. So you get that first bit there. And then, um, I have a specific team that I built for this, and I'll show you not how it works, because, man, the video that I'm adding this part into is already 40 minutes long, so let's just not go there. Um, I wanted to be comprehensive, but maybe not that comprehensive. Okay, so what I do is, and, and there's a reason that certain units are unequipped espers here, except for the three in the middle. They're all samurais. Uh, Titus is set to Samurai Sub. The reason for that is that Samurais have a move called Mediation, which creates a diamond around themselves and raises bravery. So the positioning here is really important because as long as you figure out how to move each of these three units, they can, within their first move, assuming someone is not in the space, buff to the places that it's going to default put your first and fifth person. And this is only true on the very first map of the game. Uh, this is the one that I train bravery on. You can stand there and buff and buff and buff far, far, far longer than you actually need to to raise bravery. 
and you still won't get attacked by things, even if you have low-level characters, because the wolves are just that slow. There's only two of them. They can't possibly kill you, even if they do attack you. I mean, it's it was meant for you to go in with, like, a level 1 Prince Mont and be able to whoop ass. Um, so, uh... <laughs> It's that, that, and this format, these units being in the positions that they are and at the speeds that they are, and you might have to tweak and figure out how to kind of get this set up, is so that they can all move into that ideal position, which is going to be along a diagonal between the two units. I know it would probably make more sense to see that in person, and I've done a video about it before, but I trust you can figure it out. However, the reason that I pulled up this specific account is because if you have Astrius or if you have, I think there's two other TMRs that do this now, but um, Cecil's as well, both raise bravery in an AOE. So when you're looking for friend units to bring with you, because you absolutely want to bring a friend with you, you want someone who's wearing Astrius's TMR or Cecil's TMR so that you can get that buff. And if you have either of those TMRs yourself, put them on your samurai units so that they can have an additional buff because they each only get one cast of mediation. It might take 10 or 15 runs to go from 70 to 99, 97. And it's going to get significantly slower as that number gets higher. But this is the basic format for how to do that. As far as spirit goes, um, any sort of like auto battle party that you're running a lot, if you run Moore's TMR, um, I'm not sure I have a character on this list that can equip it, but also Verush's TMR, but also, is this Ray's Faith? No. Um, there... Point being, there are at least a couple of TMRs that can raise faith. And if you have to, it's not that one either. Um, if you have to, you can turn off some of their other buffs and just run them on your auto party. And they'll just spam that buff, raising their faith every time. You want to be really careful with these TMRs because if you put them on a unit that doesn't need the faith and they end up with 97 faith... You're basically your only option is to put them in the barracks for a couple of days to fix that problem and just kind of deal with the fact that you couldn't barracks a unit you would have rather had in there. Um, so that's how you raise bravery and faith. That's why you should raise bravery and faith. And in what cases and good God, that took an extra 10 minutes all by itself. And this just hammers in a point that I was making in an earlier video that despite there being great income inequality between um, players in WOTAV in general, it takes more than just paying money to actually be decent at this game. The only really dangerous whales are the whales that know what they're doing too. <laughs> because look, I tried to make a simple video. I, 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 I explicitly didn't do equipment, vision cards, uh, espers, any of that stuff. Everything that relates to the specific unit and it's still going to be close to an hour long. And it still won't necessarily be comprehensive of how you do dreams, even though I did describe the process in here. Um, and could probably get video for it, but you know what? We'll probably talk about it more then, okay? See you then.